Hi guys, welcome back to another video where today, well, this is a new series. This is the wrap up for the AFL uh, season. We're going to be doing this for all the rounds from now on. This is round two and I'm joined by Josh once again. Say hello, mate. Hello everybody. And as you said, the topic for this is round two, all the results and our opinions on the game. So I get Kisser to start us off with the thrilling draw of Collingwood versus Richmond. Cheers, mate. Uh, well, what a game that was. Richmond supporter here, Collingwood supporter there. Uh, yeah, both sides, just unbelievable defensive pressure. Obviously, Richmond have got one of the best defences in the league. I'm not trying to be biased, but I, I reckon uh, we've got one of the best defences. Also, Collingwood, uh, fair play to them. Um, 36 apiece. Yeah, just what a game. Um, yeah, obviously I saw the game as well as a Collingwood fan and it was super thrilling. It had yeah. beautiful defence as Kizza talked about. Just the way Collingwood and Richmond got the the, um, the ball out of their defensive half. It was just yeah. spontaneous, like Collingwood's handballs were on point. But um, like the the play was nothing you've ever seen before. There was like speckies, there was candy yeah. getting sold left, right and centre. There was also yeah. interesting umpire decisions to go with the game. Like Jack Higgins mark. We won't talk about that though, but we will say congratulations for Jack Higgins for making his return after a brain, yeah. brain bleed. So yeah, congrats absolutely. to him. But we'll move on from that game. We'll go to the Friday night game of Geelong versus Hawthorne. And Geelong ended up on top of that by 61 points. Yeah, uh, 108 to 47. Hawthorne played well in the first half, I believe. Um, and then Geelong just ended up trampling all over Hawthorne. But uh, yeah, fair play to Geelong. You had yep. Frost on Dalhouse, Frawley on Ablett. It didn't really work out for Hawks. I'm sure the selectors would have seen that and they'll change yep. it up next time. But yeah, GMHBA Stadium, I always thought Geelong was going to win. Obviously not by that much. But now we'll move on to the Saturday games, which was Brisbane and Fremantle. Brisbane getting on top of that by 12 points. Yes, Josh, uh, 81 to 69, apparently a very close game, a couple dodgy uh, umpiring decisions, as there always is with the AFL umpires, but um, yeah, Brisbane just coming on top, and I'll um, hand you over to Josh to talk about more about that. Yeah, considering I watched the game, the um, decision of the mark before the line was absolutely shocking, it was definitely a mark, if you know what I'm talking about, you know. But yeah, very shocking decisions. But Freeman all on the comeback. Michael Walters, Nat Fife really shown their ability of footy in that last half. But yeah, Brisbane sealing the deal with a late goal uh, with three seconds left. And that was Dane Storco. But the next game was Carlton and Melbourne. And Melbourne getting the chocolates by one point, 53 to 54. And I saw Carlton choke in that first quarter. It was like 40 to 0, very bad. But then they came on a comeback. Paddy Cripps, Mark Murphy, they all showed their, showed their footy ability. And they came back. Uh, yeah, they had the most clearances for the game and inside 50s, Carlton. So, yeah, interesting there. But at the end, Sam Walsh's ball use was just a bit poor and stopped them from winning the game. But, Kizza, what was your view on that game? Uh, yeah, very unlucky, Carlson. Aussie Sports will be very angry with that. But, uh, yeah, that's just unlucky to Carlson. Uh, Melbourne, you are very lucky there. But the next game is the showdown. Port Adelaide and Adelaide. 110 Port Adelaide to 35 Adelaide. Uh, oh, no. Adelaide, you've got some work to do. Uh, they look like they're rebuilding. Uh, their uh, team and squad but uh, yeah, I'll hand you over to Josh to talk more about that I mean we all knew Adelaide was going to finish bottom four but the performances they have put up are just dreadful I mean if you're going to get smashed by three youngsters from Port, Butters, Dersma and Rosie then I don't think they should be playing the leaders are not playing well to be fair none of them are but yeah. like yeah, Port Adelaide definitely deserved the chocolate. Stephen Motlop shining. Butters with eight tackles. But yeah, very boring game to watch. And that was the first game fans were allowed to come. Uh, good for Port Adelaide fans. Uh, not too great for Adelaide. But then the next game shocked us all. Gold Coast winning against West Coast. 
by 44. Almost doubled their score, 90 to 46. Again, the youngsters in that game, pick number one and pick number two, Matt Rowe, Noah Anderson, did monumental footy abilities in that game. I mean, Noah Rao, uh, Noah Rao, Matt Rao, probably with the three Brownlow votes for that game. Noah Anderson, probably with the two. I mean, they played that well. Their physical attack on the ball was fantastic. West Coast um, weren't uh, trying, basically. I know they were, but, like, if you're going to get crushed by Gold Coast by that much, you seriously got to change something with your team, especially when you've added Tim Kelly to your lineup and you're expected to be yeah. a premiership side. It's yeah. definitely not good enough. And just to add to the poor performance of West Coast, Jeremy McGovern is now suspended for a week for a jumper punch against Alex Sexton. So, yeah, not so good there. Uh, Kizza, what was your view on that? And then you can get us started on the Sunday games. Yeah, when I saw that result, I was like, wait, hang on. i got to refresh this page. And I saw Gold Coast actually won. And I'm like, hang on. Brandon Ellis went to Gold Coast. It's Brandon Alice's spirit. I know he didn't play, but it's Brandon Alice's spirit. Uh, and they didn't even have that captain. That's unreal. But um, I'll hand you over to the Sunday games, um, Josh. Uh, yeah, uh, GWS and North Melbourne. People would have saw that as an upset. But personally, I didn't. I tipped North Melbourne to win this game. I was looking at GWS's list, and I saw they were very, their, their good players were very inconsistent. And Jeremy Cameron that game, I believe, only got under five disposals for the game. Not good enough if you're going to win the Coleman. And North Melbourne uh, did very, very well to keep up with GWS the whole game, but then did uh, very fantastically in the last quarter. Uh, Cameron Zerha, mm -hmm. the bull for North Melbourne, uh, he will be one of the best players in the next generation coming up. He is so good. His attack on the ball is brilliant. Fair play to North Melbourne for beating uh, GWS. Yep. They look like a pretty good team this year. Uh, but the next game is Sydney and Essendon. And um, Essendon, sorry, getting the chocolates over Sydney. 79 to 73. Uh, six point margin. Uh, well done, Essendon. Uh, especially at the SCG. Uh, fair play. Always a thriller in those games, but um, Darcy Parrish, I believe, kicked um, a very good goal to win it for Essendon. Um, yeah, I just want to talk about one thing, though, that some of you Essendon fans that are very excited at the moment probably w wouldn't know. So I was looking at three-quarter time, I was looking at who had the most fantasy points, but then I scrolled down to the bottom, and I saw Darcy Parrish on seven. At the end of the game, he had 50 more. 50 fantasy points in one quarter. He had 13 disposals. He had four clearances, four inside 50s. He had 280 running meters with the ball. He played fantastically in that last quarter and kicked a winning goal to beat Sydney. As we all know, um, Sydney almost kicked a goal in the last 20 seconds and could have won them the game. Uh, Row bottom hit the post, but um, yeah, uh, Essendon deserved that win and are now sitting third on the ladder. But, um, yeah, the next game, which was the last game of the round, it was an upset, 88-49, to St Kilda by 39 points. I mean, Zach Jones, uh, Brad Hill, but you still got the players like Jack Billings, Seb Ross, and then you've also yeah. got Hunter Clark. The St Kilda are going to be a force to be reckoned with. They're doing so well. But Bulldogs, on the other hand, finishing themselves after round two at the bottom of the ladder, and that's where they deserve yeah. if they're going to play footy like that. But a fair play to St Kilda uh, for that win. Uh, thanks yeah. for joining me, Josh. And right, the wrap-up team. Sonny out. See you guys. Bye.